Hello, and welcome to Medical Terminology Online. Uh, I'm Dr. Jim Stewart. I'll be running the course for you this semester. This will be run as much like an in-class course as I can. These are not professionally recorded recordings, and um, I will hem and haw a little bit. One time we even had some workmen walk in the back of the room and start working on some lights while I was doing the lectures. But these lectures are going to be the same ones that I give to my open classes, to my live classes, and so um, it will be a very similar experience for you, I hope. This is a really important little introductory PowerPoint and lecture because it's going to tell you how to access everything on your various sites that you will be going to in this course and how to make everything work for you. Medical terminology itself um, is an, an important concept in the field of health professions. Um, we don't use the English word for um, throat in Japan, and we don't have to learn their word for eye in Japan. Instead, we have one language that was created so that all health professionals in the world could speak with each other. You can email something to somebody, they know what you're talking about. Not only that, once you get this um, into your brain, you will be able to look at medical terms, in many cases one you've never seen before, and figure out what it means because you'll put the word parts together and be able to say, okay, this means that because I learned that. Um, we're learning the, uh, t a couple of different kinds of terms, one that are put together from old languages like Greek and Latin, and others that have been agreed upon in more recent years. The first couple of lectures, we're going to do some basics, positions on the body, locations in the thorax, locations in the abdomen, and from then on we go through each body system. We'll do the cardiovascular system, the respiratory system, the renal system, the GI tract as separate lectures and you'll learn the specific terms for those in each of those individual lectures. So I'm going to try to teach this like I do in a classroom. In the classroom I give a lecture, we stop every once in a while and work on some practice questions and activities, some online stuff that comes with the book that is unusually good in this book, and maybe some other practice stuff. We discuss things, so I want a little bit of, of discussion type interaction in this class. Then after each lecture, we take a quiz covering that material, and then we will have you know, midterm and final exams in addition to those quizzes. So all of those comport, uh, uh, components will be found in this course. Um, I started out uh, actually using some of the recordings I made in the live class. There may still be one or two of those in this version of the, of the class for you. So this class, when I teach it live, is two and a half hours one day a week. And so you're going to have one lecture every week, the same lecture I would give in that class. You will have um, a bunch of practice activities and things, and you'll have a quiz, just like I do um, in the live class. All of my lectures are recorded for you on Mediasite. That's what you're watching right now. The link, I'll email it to you, but it's also on your UNM Learn site. You should be able just to click on that, log in with your same user ID and password that you do to get on UNM in the first place, watch the media site lecture. If you have a really slow internet connection, it may take a while to load, or you may want to go down to school or some place where you can get a faster internet connection, because it is a streaming video type thing, and it's kind of large. Most of the lectures will be a single chapter. There are a couple of lectures that are two chapters because they're really short ones and it makes the course come out right. Be sure to follow your syllabus and know for sure what lectures you're supposed to do that week.
First of all, yeah, I hope you all know how to use UNM Learn Blackboard, um, the UNM Learn site on your, on your screen. Let's see if I can bring this up for you. I have, so here, if you're on my UNM, you go up in the upper right here, and this little guy with the, with the uh, mortar board, the hat on, and cap and gown, that's the uh, um, UNM Learn site. If you already, aren't already logged on, you put your normal U username and password. Now you're going to come down to, um, I have a whole bunch of courses that I teach, but you may only have a couple of them in here that are the ones you're taking that semester. Right now I'm going to show you um, fall 2017, because that's, that's what I'm teaching right now. But you'll look for the one that is appropriate to you. You click on it, and here you have all the stuff that I've put up here for you. You have a little welcome thing that kind of tells you what the course is about. Um, and it has the, uh, it's the PowerPoint for this uh, lecture we're doing right now. The instructions for the course, some, some more things to go over to, to uh, um, you know, again, this material that I'm giving you right now. These will help you try to navigate all of the pitfalls in doing an online course. You'll have a syllabus for your semester. There's the lectures link for MediaSite. You click on that, you ought to be able to go to MediaSite and log on and watch the lectures. Here's a workaround that our t IT guy put in for some people that were having a hard time with MediaSite. Most people had no problem. Those that did, some of this helped, and he put his phone number there so you can call him and he can help you if you have a hard time getting the media site lectures. Here's the link for the Evolve site. I'll show you a way to get there directly too. And this is the actual textbook online information. And here's are all the lecture PowerPoints. So I've given you all the PowerPoints. When I do a lecture, the PowerPoint will be on the screen and I'm pointing at stuff. And so you'll probably want to download that PowerPoint. Over here, you see Medical Terminology Blog. I'll talk about that later, but this is a blog that I'll put up every week, and everybody needs to participate in that blog. The media site recordings. Once again, here is a link. So here's another place you have the link. It's a monster. So you'll want to copy and paste it. What you'll probably want to do is go to the media site and then put it in as a favorite so that it's easy to get to. This is where all of your lectures will be. Now the Evolve site has its own set of challenges, but this is a really good site with a lot of important information on it. So you go to evolve.aselvier.com, or you click on that link I have on UNM Learn, and you have to sign in as a student. You have to create an account, indicate you're a student. The course ID number for this course is right here. So you can copy and paste, type that in, whatever, so that you get to the right course. You have to set it up, set up an account, and pay for an access code. It's about 48 bucks. It's cheaper than buying a regular textbook. And it has the online version of the textbook and a lot of other things that you'll be using. Also access to your quizzes, your tests, exams, and the like. So everybody needs to get that access code from the Evolve site before you can actually start doing anything on the Evolve site. Some people like to buy a physical tech textbook so they can carry it around. That's fine. You're going to have plenty of good online stuff with your access code. So if you want an ex a textbook, buy a used one that's cheap because it'll do you just as well. You don't need to buy the textbook with the access code. It's a different access code. It won't, it won't do the same thing as this one. It won't actually get you on the um, online version of the course. 
So after you pay for the access code and you're ready to go, you open your site. You're going to click on, go to the left menu, and I'm going to show you here. Click on course. This will open up the course, and you click on the appropriate chapter. They call them modules. So module one is chapter one. Then at the top of uh, the top option is your actual textbook, and you got to click on each section to make it open up. It's a, it takes a little practice to go from the next thing to the next thing to the next thing, but it works when you, when you get used to it. And at the bottom of that uh, menu will be the quizzes that you will actually take and submit every chapter, and that will be the quiz part of your grade, which is a major uh, the majority of your grade are these quizzes that you take every week along with the chapter. You'll take all sections of the quizzes. At the first chapter, I think there's only one section. The second chapter or third, there might be two. After that, I think there are three sections of quizzes for each chapter. It's fairly straightforward. You have all the time you want to do it. It works out really well for everybody. Make sure that you take those quizzes and hit submit, and the grade from those quizzes will go in my grade book automatically. Let me show you how that looks on here. If I can find it. Okay, so here's the, here's the course, here's the Evolve site, and I get to choose between my classes. So I'm going to Medical Terminology, uh, terminology Online. There again is the course ID number. Your interface may look a little different than this. But you get here, and we're viewing, I'm doing the student view. So this is what you should see when you get here. And you go down here, and it's a little hard to find. It's unfortunate. But if this is all the way opened up, which mine is right now with all, everything showing, you have to go here until you find course, the single word course, not course content or something, but course. You click on course, and all of the chapters come up. If I want to look at chapter four, module four, I click on that. Now this top is the book. If I click on that, I will get all of these sections, and I can look at the anatomy and physiology and the structure of the skin, and then all I have to do is hit the forward arrow, and I can go through you know, all of the book you know, for this chapter. It's good stuff. It's got a lot of, lot of extra things in there. Okay, so that's what you do with course. Not only that, but when you go to your module and you have your book at the top, you will see quizzes. Here, section one quiz, section two quizzes. Those are the quizzes that you take. So under course, the book's at the top, the quizzes are at the bottom. On a few chapters, there's also an exam at the bottom. Ignore that. Your weekly obligation is to take quizzes, not exams. Your only exams are the midterm and the final. So you'll take the quizzes and submit them. Now, if I want to do, have some extra stuff, and this is where it gets really good in this book, you go to resources, and I click on resources, and then I click on student resources, because that's what you are. And this thing loads. It takes a little while for it to load. So give it a minute. If you have a slow connection, it'll take a minute for this to load. And then look, I have quick quizzes. These are practice quizzes that you can take. Don't email these to me. You don't need to. It gives you a chance at the bottom. Those other quizzes are the ones you take each, each block. Games. There are several different kind of games. Who wants to be a millionaire? Things like Pac-Man and stuff. And they're really kind of good, engaging ways of practicing all of these various terms. In some chapters, they'll give you a pronunciation and spelling thing. You spell it, the computer tells you what it sounds like. Or, you know, you, you say what it sounds like yourself. It's a good way to practice the pronunciation. The health records, this is like you're actually a nurse or, 
or a doctor and you're filling out somebody's health records and you have to use the right terms in there. Some extra practice tests. All of this stuff is for practice. So, and you can go back and forth between other chapters. I can go to chapter 9 and see what's available there. I can, you know, go to these other chapters. So, you do this before you take your quizzes under course so that you get as good with the material as you can be before you take your quiz. It makes sense. Now, to get back to that main page, the only way I've found to do it is to go up to the top here where, you know, your, your um, browser is showing you the different things that I have open, and I see medical terminology online. I click on that, and I'm back on my original page. So I could go to a different module. I could go down and click on course and take my, uh, you know, for this, and take my three quiz sections. So resources for all the practice stuff, course for the book, and your required quizzes. So here's the rest of using Evolve. Click on resources, do the games and quick quizzes and practice stuff. Resources is practice, course is the book, and your actual quizzes. Now, when it comes to the midterm and final, they will also show up on your main page under resources. Um, for instance, I think I've still got this up. Yeah, if I look under resources here from the main page, there's the midterm exam that my students are taking this semester. So when it comes time to take a midterm exam, you'll just simply click on that, take the exam. It will automatically submit um, at the end. Actually, I think you have to say, yeah, I'm ready to submit, because you can keep going back until time runs out. The midterm and final are timed exams, so when the time runs out, it will submit for you or you can submit it early. Okay. The quizzes and tests, I'll tell you, I'll remind you which ones to take. The quizzes for each chapter, a midterm, and a final. 70% of your grade, approximately, is made up of the quizzes. That is going to be a boost to your grade. Most people do really well on the quizzes. The midterm and the final are more an indication to me of how well you learn that material from the quizzes. They're timed, they're single attempt exams just like you would take in a real classroom. To communicate with me, you can email me directly at jimsaba at unm.edu. It's right there. If you have a specific question, a personal question, you're having problems with, you know, getting the material done this week because my child is sick, you know, that kind of stuff, email to me and I'll respond pretty quickly. I check my email at least once, usually twice a day, and I'll get back to you pretty quickly. Meanwhile, as a general um, communication, you will go to your UNM Learn site, the medical terminology blog will be over there. Every week, I will set up a new blog for that week's material. Everybody is expected to participate. This is your interaction, just like you would have in a real classroom. It gives me a chance to see how you're doing, the material you understand, the material you may not. So I expect everybody to participate in the blog. And you don't have to have a question. You can answer somebody else's question. You can expound upon it. Some of my best blogs this semester have been people, my sister has diabetes, and I have learned such and such and such. A, a way of expanding everybody's understanding of these disease conditions. And I'd like feedback. You know, are you getting the material well? Does it make sense? Are you having a hard time accessing something? Um, 
Let me, let me know how the experience is going. In class, it's easy. Somebody can say, hey, you know, I don't understand that, or I'm really having a hard time seeing the media site lectures or something, and I can correct it very quickly. So engage. So that's how to do the course. Now you can go on to the first week's material. Remember, look at your syllabus. Week one is actually chapters one and three. They're two short chapters, and I combine them together. The second week will be chapter two. So you're going to be doing the lectures, the material, the quizzes, and everything for chapters one and three the first week. And then we'll move on generally to individual chapters for the rest of the semester. I hope you enjoy it. And by the way, you're always going to see me messing with the computer because I have to plug and replug to get it to turn on and off. It's just the way life is.